Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. It's the one everybody's been waiting for. We've been working on this Bally 1971 4 million BC pinball machine. And we're finally going to play it, test it a little bit, and then fix whatever is wrong with it. So, if you haven't been watching, we've done an entire series on this machine. So let me tell you what all we've done. You really need to go back and watch the videos, but I'll summarize for you. The first one we reviewed just how cool of a machine it is and what kind of shape it was in whenever we brought it in. And then we did a video where we worked on the mechanism, the mech panel, on the bottom of the cabinet. And then we did a video where we worked in the back box, behind the glass. The glass is in perfect shape on this one, by the way. We're working on this for a customer. By the way, since we're talking, by the way, here at the beginning of the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already. You're going to love this. <laughs> Our next video, we worked on the bottom of the play field and the famous zipper flippers. We worked on those a little bit. And then our next video, we worked on the top of the play field. Now, this is a very cool game because it has a multi-ball feature uh, in, a, in an EM pinball machine. Not, there weren't a ton of those. I think there was about a dozen or so that had multi-ball. There were more games that had zipper flippers than games that had multi-ball. But this one has multi-ball. And we're about to multi-ball the crap out of it. Um, but we haven't tested it yet, so we've rebuilt flippers, rebuilt the whole playfield, cleaned everything, got it all looking spiffy. But we need to play it and see what all's broke. So what I have done is I commissioned by one of our wonderful uh, viewers here, made me this little notepad, stuff we got to do. And he drew a caricature of me working inside the pinball machine. So I'm going to use this pad, and we're going to write down everything that's broke on it, and then we're going to go through and systematically fix it. What do you think about that? So I'm going to put you right here. Remember, always keep your hand at the level of your eye. Uh, whenever I'm here at night, I listen to uh, uh, audio books, and I was just listening to The Phantom of the Opera. So. Okay, so uh, we're, uh, we're going to play it a little bit and see what's going on. So first... I'm going to hit start, and I'll tell you about the score reels. Boom! Boom, baby! Okay, so the score reels all reset. The one player up light came on and then went back off. The ball and play light is not on. So I'm going to simply write that down. That's something we need to look at. Now, later on, when we review, we'll go through and fix all these one by one. Ball and play light doesn't work. Remember, this is stuff we got to do. The one up light blinks. So why would it do that? Well, whatever tells it, whatever lights up that light, probably a stepper unit, must be a little bit off or it's not quite adjusted tight enough or something. But it kicked the ball out into the, into the uh, out lane and it kicked one ball out because in this one there's three balls, so that's good that it did that. Um... So I'm just going to play a game and we'll see if anything crazy happens and then we'll go back and test individual things. Now I haven't installed the bell yet. Ooh, a little zipper flipper action. Now remember, these are the uh, two-inch stunner flippers, so they're not as strong as modern flippers. So you can't expect them to be crazy, crazy. This thing has a skill shot with that ramp too. That's pretty cool. So that shot that I just made—that's as strong as these flippers get. You can't make them like that. That's a perfectly strong two-inch flipper. It will not get any stronger than that. These things are zipping, baby. Look at them. Oh, forgot about the kicker, didn't ya? Boy, she's playing pretty good. The ball and play light is not working at all. I think I'm on ball three, though. 
Also, I'm not sure about the uh, the pop bumper lights. That seems weird to me. See how some come on and some don't. If you folks don't like zipper flippers, I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm going to write down pop bumper lights. Because those look... We need to research that. Why are they on and off and all that? Let me test it with my finger. It's off. It should be 10 points. There's no 10 point bell, so you shouldn't hear anything. So it is... It's, it's right. It's at 10 points. Same with this one. Okay, now this one's at 1,000. And it's scoring a thousand. Okay. So they're, it's not like the light isn't on and it should be. It's, I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do, but I just don't know yet why. See how the blue one's not turning on? Okay. So I ha it's on five balls. So I have the bell to make the ring when it makes 10 points, but everybody always complains, oh, my weak little ears, I don't like hearing so many bells. So I'm going to leave it off till later in the video. Well, let's start it again and we'll test some individual things. What do you think about that? All right, everything reset. So we're cool. So there is a skill shot on this game. The ball comes out, crosses over to play field, goes up the ramp. Ted Zell made this game. Let me go check. I've been saying, I hope that's his name. I hope that's his name. I think it is. Let me go check, though, to make sure that his name is Ted Zell because this guy was so awesome. We don't want to screw up his name. Okay, we did not screw up his name. His name is Ted Zell. So there was this dude that worked at Bally way back in the day as opposed to recently. <laughs> and... His thing was, he didn't like play fields that were uh, the same on both sides, symmetrical. He didn't like that. So he always made his play fields weird as hell. We had a Bally Big Day that was a really cool one. Really old, though. And we had a bandwagon that he did. And he just made really interesting play field designs. So the guy would come up with just crazy stuff. So, for instance, there is a damn ramp built into the play field, but it's made out of the same piece of wood that the play field's made out of. So they just cut a hole and then bent the wood to make it a ramp. So it's about an inch and a half high there, and it's woo, and it's touching down here. You know, it's just, just stuff like that. And, uh, you know, this side is completely different from this side. The ball actually crosses the play field. There's a volcano over here. The guy just came up with creative stuff. And then this mess up here, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So you can go up the ramp and then back down here. So this part of the play field is separate. But then you can go into the tar pit by hitting the ball up here, which is a dead end, but then you fall back this way. He just came up with really creative designs where the stuff doesn't line up the way it normally does. And Look at, the, look at Bally's big day. We had one of those. It's just crazy. Just weird the way that he made it. But anyway, so the ball comes across, and it has this interesting little scale shot. If you hit all three of these switches, and then hit the top one, which is the pterodactyl, but don't go over the top, you get a thousand points for these three as the ball rolls back down. So, that's a hundred, that's a hundred, and that's a hundred. All of these are a hundred every time, right? So if you just go up to here and roll back, you get a hundred each time. Right? But if you go up and then you hit this one, it turns on this 3000 light. And as you roll back down, now these score a thousand each time. So that just gave me 3000 points. The 3000 lights on here too. But if you hit it and you fall over the edge, well, you hit this one, which gives you 10 points and turns off the 3000. So you make 10 points if you fall over the edge, but you make 3,000 if you hit there and go back. Very cool. Um, I think what's going on... Yeah, look, the bulb's just loose on this one. I, I bet if I hit it now, I get my 1,000 points. Yes, I do. 
So it's just a loose bulb on the blue one. All right, so that's scoring right. Let's see if this gives us our 10. 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. Oh, there's not one there because, and that's another thing. There's a spot right here for a switch, but there's no switch because they ended up having to put a mech there to make the tar pit work. 10 points. 10 points. I got two 10 points, but that's common. That one's a little bouncy. We'll keep our eye on it. Uh, kicker on when lit. You got to watch it though. It might hit your finger. 6830. It says 1000, so I should get 7830. <laughs> Whoa, about got me. 7830. Close the flippers and gives you 100. I got the 100, and you see it close the flippers. Opens the flippers and gives you a hundred. Yeah, buddy. What else have we got? A hundred and opens the a uh, hundred and closes the flippers. So that's this is a mushroom bumper. When the ball goes under there, it pushes this up. Got a hundred and it closed the flippers. A hundred and opens the flippers. Whenever you have uh, whenever you have. Uh, paired things on the play field like this is 100 and closes the flippers and this is 100 and closes the flippers. These are actually probably just tied together because they do the exact same thing. So if they can get one of them to work, if you just run two wires over to the other one, it, it'll work too. Um, so usually you don't have a situation. It's, it's like all of these ones that are stand up for 10 points. If you get 10 points on this one, usually all the other ones will work too because they they all work exactly the same. Okay, oh, there's another 10. It worked. Um, what else do we have? I think all we've got left is the tricky stuff. Oh, we've got these. Open gate and turn off the kicker. Open the gate, turn off the kicker. Close the gate, turn on the kicker. Close the gate, turn on the kicker. I was thinking, why do you even want that gate? Because if the ball falls in there, it just lets you shoot again, but you were already playing it anyway. But the, then I, I thought about it. The reason you want that is because it gives you the opportunity to make this skill shot. You can't make this shot. You might, you might be able to bounce it off here or something. I, I, don't, I don't think you can make that shot with the flippers. Um, so the only way to really make that cool ramp shot for the 3,000 points is from the... the uh, the skill shot. So once that opens, it gives you that opportunity again if the ball falls down there. Okay, so we just saw that the kicker works. Um, open the gate, off kicker, so it's the same thing. And those aren't giving us any points. Cool. All right, so uh, the only thing that we have left is our tricky little tar pit and the volcano. So let's see about that, shall we? So the volcano is really cool. When you land in it, see it says 2,000 points, but I don't think you score it until it kicks out, but let's see. Yeah, I didn't score any points, but look, it holds the ball. It's a ball lock, and now I have another ball in the shooter lane. And then it starts this. This was that volcano unit that we saw underneath the, uh, the play field. It was about right here on the mech board. So it's a motor that turns around and it, it has like a slip joint on it. So these are lighting up. So I guess whenever you eject this, it gives you whatever it says. So we're at 8240 right now. So 8,000. So the way you erupt the volcano is you hit this. Now when it erupts it, notice that it's the same one that closes the flippers. So it's going to close these so you can't really lose the ball. That's a really cool design, you know. For, the, for this old of a game, that's like really well thought out. So I'm just going to hit it at random and we'll see what it stops on and see if we get it. 8240. We're at 11340. So I don't know about all that. But you know what? We can do it again. We're at 11340. Oh, you get a hundred when you hit the thing. So I, I should have got a hundred. Eleven three forty. So 
So I should be at 11, 440. I'm at 14, 440. So I got 3,000, but it's saying 5,000. Uh, hmm. Okay, we're at 5 now. What happens if I land in there now? 14, 440. So my theory is we should go to 19, 540. Maybe I already scored the 5,000. It just hasn't kicked out yet. So we're at 14,440. We're going to get 100 for this. We got 100, so we're at 17,540. I'm getting 3,000 every time, no matter what. So I'm on 2,000 now, 17,540. 19,640. So I did get my 2,000 that time. I don't know, folks. That's definitely not working how it should. Volcano scoring. My opinion, the volcano scoring is not right. Okay, and now we have the tar pit. I haven't used this at all yet. It has this ball walker thing over here that's really cool. It's kind of like, it's similar to the one on Flight 2000, and there was an old game from like the 30s that had that same ball walker on it. Um, it's a 19640. It locked it. Boy, that's so cool. So it went down, and when it hit the switch, it shut this little gate. So now if the ball goes up there, it will come down through here. Right? So, um, it knows there's two balls on the play field. Which is why it didn't kick another one out. I guess I could have one just locked over here in the volcano to get the third ball out. Yeah, so there's our third ball. There's no switch in the out lane like on a lot of games. Okay, so to get that to walk down, look, 1,000 when lit advances the ball in the tar pit. Okay, and it's going to open the flippers. And it, it dropped the ball one position. So we're at 2640, 21640, so that's working. So there's three positions in the ball pit, in the tar pit. So that gets us back out and running. It also opened it back up so that we can lock the ball again. That is very cool. Okay, so that seems to be working fine. Um, Looks like about everything's working. We made our little list. Ooh, that left drain. Now, I believe it holds the, uh, like a pro. I believe it holds locked balls over from game to game, too. like those zipper flippers. That's pretty cool. Let's see if it holds the uh, captive ball over from game to game. Game over. Uh, there she sits. Let's start a new game. Boy, it sure does. Boy, that is cool. Very cool. I like it.
Give me them points. This thing's got some action, doesn't it? Look, you don't even have to flip it. Now, you, you may remember that the first problem that we had was that whenever you turn on the game, it would give you 10 points. And the, the blue, uh, I think I just knocked it out. I don't think I actually scored it. This has got to be ball five. But remember, the ball in play is not actually counting up. Okay, game over. Uh, okay, all right, so I've got my list. Let's carefully work through it and fix them all. Okay, so here's our whole list. The ball and play lights are not working. The one up light blinked and then went off. I haven't done a two, three, or four player game yet. Uh, the pop bumper lights were tripping. And the volcano scoring. But besides that, we're looking pretty good. So we should be able to knock that out pretty simple. Let's do the pop bumper lights first. This will be the easiest. So um, I'll take the caps off and we'll look down in there. Okay, so I happen to have the game turned on, but none of these are, you know, the three relays aren't in right now. So this is the one that was giving us the most trouble. And if you look, the bulb was pretty loose. If you look at these, that one's a little loose. And this one, the whole fixture is moving. It's not loose at all. So why is that? It's because this one's a more modern bulb. The replacement bulbs are not quite as tall as the original ones. Ain't that some stuff, right? So there's about three ways you can fix it. You can use an old bulb. So I guess why I didn't replace these two because they were in there good. <laughs> They're working outside. You can use an old bulb. Um, you can put a new socket in, which is a little bit of a pain because you have to take the whole assembly apart and unsolder it and put it all back, and you have to pay money to buy a new one, right? Or you can try to bend it back. So what's happened is it's had a little bit bigger bulb in there for 50 years, and it's pushed the spring the flat part inside down farther so it's just a little loose so if you could bend that back 
it would fix it. So don't do it with the lights on, obviously, or the power on. But I've got like a little hook I can like put in there. And uh, retention. Retention it so that it holds the bulb better. And there's another way you can do it. This is one of my big this is one of my big secrets we're gonna give you here. You can take the bulb and you can put a little bit more solder on the end of the bulb, which will make it a little bit taller, <laughs> which will make a hold in the socket better. So you can use your own judgment. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna bend that back a little bit tighter so it'll hold the bulb better. And I'm gonna clean up the socket too. So the metal part, you want it to be nice and shiny so that touches the, uh, makes good electrical contact. So uh, let me work on those three and then uh, we'll come back and see if it holds the bulb better. Now the, if you get it where it holds it kind of, you're fine until it moves. Now what would cause the bulb to move? If there was any kind of violent shaking like this, somewhere near the bulb it would make it move like, you know, all around it because it's a pop bumper. So you always have this problem with pop bumpers. So you got to get them where they're really holding that bulb pretty tight. They later stopped using these and started using the 555s which slide into a socket and it holds it a lot better. It like actually clamps it. Um, but on these old ones you have this problem on like every EM that uses a 44 or 47 bulb in the pop bumper. All right, so let me clean them up and tighten them up, and then we'll see if it's any better. Okay, so I cleaned them, bent them back, and you can see they do move a little bit, but that's fine. You'll get the hang of it once you mess with it a little bit, you can tell. But we got to try it with it on. So the way they light is as it rolls up this so it can shake pretty violently and not reset it not turn off so that should be a lot better okay so I think I noticed another problem while I was messing with that when the ball drains it doesn't turn all of the bumpers off So watch the pop bumpers. So the green one didn't turn off. But maybe it's supposed to be like that? I don't know. We'll check it out. Let's go look in the schematics. Okay, folks. Joe's working in the back room. That's what you're hearing. We're going to see why the green light is staying on. So what holds the lights on are these three relays here. The blue thumper bumper light relay, the green thumper bumper light relay, and the red thumper bumper light relay. So the green one was, is staying on at the end of the ball. So what makes them come on? The ramp blue relay, the ramp green ray relay, and that would have said the ramp red relay at some point. So we're looking at the green one. So you hit the switch, which turns on the ramp green relay. That relay pulls this in, which provides power to it, but then it locks on, remember? The way it locks on is whenever it pulls in, the relay pulls in, the green one, the blue one, or the red one, it turns on a switch on itself, which holds power on, until the third ball relay pulls in. So the third ball relay, see that normally closed line through it? That means when the third ball relay is not energized, this is connected. So as long as the third ball relay is off, these lights will keep power, right? So we can kind of tell already what must be the issue. And the reason we can already tell is because we've got three that do the same thing and they all get their power from the same place. So is this switch bad? No, it can't be because if it was messed up, then the blue one and the red one would be doing it too. So the only, the only switch that only is on the green one is this switch, the one on itself that holds itself on, or it could be the green relay ramp, or, you know, 
it's one of one of these switches is staying on. I guess it could be that the, the ramp green relay is staying on and so it's keeping power that way. But anyway, the third ball relay, until it fires, these will stay on. So how does it fire? And so we move over here. There is our third ball relay. So this is how they make the multi-ball work. So this says number one trough switch, number two trough switch, number three trough switch, and then the out hole relay. Okay. So there are three switches in the trough. Now that's the, the alley between the out hole and the shooter lane. Okay. So there's three switches for three balls. And then there's also the out hole relay. Okay. So again, that's a normally closed switch. So that means if the out hole relay is not on, that is closed. Okay. The player reset relay, if you're not resetting uh, the player, I guess, if you're not resetting, uh, that will be normally closed. And so then it does the ball release. Now this is not the out hole release, that's the out hole release. Complete, completely different. Actually, I guess that's the out hole relay, but the out hole is the, the middle of the play field. The ball release is the one over into the shooter lane. There's two on this one. This is how they make the multi-ball work. Okay, so you got a ball in the number one trough. That's the first switch uh, by the shooter lane. You've got a ball sitting in the number two trough. That's the second switch by the shooter lane. And then the third ball lands in the out hole. So when it lands in the out hole, right here, it turns on the out hole relay. So the out hole relay comes on and it starts up the score motor. There's a switch on the out hole relay that starts the score motor. Okay, so now, Moving right along, moving right along, the out hole relay is pulled in. I mean, that switch is connected, okay? So, and the score motor is turning. So, eventually, the score motor gets to this switch and shuts it. And when it shuts it, it sends power and it hits the out hole kicker solenoid. So there's two. There's the out hole kicker, that's the one in the middle, and the ball release kicker is the one over by the shooter lane. So it kicks that third ball from the out hole over into the trough. So where does it go then? Boop, boop, boop. It goes to the number three trough switch. So now you've got a ball sitting on the number one trough switch, a ball sitting on the number two trough switch, and a ball sitting on the number three trough switch, and the out hole relay is still uh, clo open, <laughs> I'm sorry, closed, pulled in, right? Because that's what just kicked the ball over. So this is still pulled in because it is holding itself on through a switch on itself until this switch opens. So this is when timing comes into play. So that's a score motor switch. So the score motor starts turning, and you saw it, it hit the other switch that kicks the ball out. Well, this one's farther along, so it has to turn farther before this opens. All right. So the out hole relay is actually still on, and the score motor is still turning, even though it already kicked the ball out of the out hole over to the third trough. So you got a ball on the first trough, a ball on the second trough switch, a ball on the third trough switch, and the out hole relay is now connected like this because it's pulled in. All of these signals, all of these symbols on the play field are normal position, how it is whenever it's just sitting there, it's not energized. But now it's energized, so it'd be this way, right? So you've got power connecting through all three switches and through the out hole relay, and it will turn on the third ball relay, which basically is saying, okay, all three balls are accounted for. So when the third ball relay comes on, it holds itself on through a switch on itself until it gets to this part of the schematic of the score motor. Now I don't know if this opens um, before the score. It may it may you know just hold itself in for a quarter revolution or something, or it may hold itself in until the next time the score motor comes on. You'd have to figure all that out. But it's a timing thing, and they designed it so if you get everything adjusted right, it should work fine. Uh, but that's how your third ball relay comes on. Okay, so then what happens? Well, the score motor keeps turning. And finally, your out hole relay drops out because the switch opens. And when it does, you've got three balls sitting on the trough, and this connects back over to here where it is in its normal position. 
power comes through the three balls, through the out hole relay. If you're not re in a resetting position, or the player reset relay it isn't is pulled in, then it triggers the ball release relay. So what's the ball release relay? Hint. It connects here and kicks the ball out. All right? But notice it can't really do that until this goes back the other way. So these won't happen at the same time. So it probably has to do, the score motors usually turn like a third revolution each time they come on. It might be a half or something, but they usually turn like a third of a revolution um, for each position. So it may, like one third it does the ball release, the out hole release, and then the next third it does the ball release. You could probably figure it out. If you was really into it, you could time it all and watch it all. Okay, so but you saw that the third ball relay came on, which would have opened this switch, which should kill power to all three of our thumper bumper lights. So, until whenever that relay comes on. So it's normally when it's off, it's connected, right? But until that comes on, and the only way to, for it to come on is at the end of a ball. Okay, now, another thing. How does the multi-ball work? Well, we have the three trough switches here, right? You saw how it, it needed to know that all three balls were in there before it would release a ball into the shooter lane. So what happens if one of the balls is in the volcano re uh, relay? All right. Well, then you would have one sitting on the number one trough switch and a second one sitting on the second trough switch and the third one would be sitting on the tar pit relay or the volcano hole relay. And it would jump around through that switch over this number three trough switch and it would still know where all three balls are and do the same thing. Well, what if you got two of them locked? Well, then you would end up with one ball on the one, number one trough switch one ball would be sitting on the tar pit, one ball would be sitting in the volcano hole relay, and then it would still know that to <laughs> do its thing. So they fixed all of that with just a couple of extra switches. They made it where it could take care of three balls instead of just using the one ball that the games usually have. So, all that to say, for our light problem, we need to look at this switch. Now if it was this switch, the ramp green relay switch. That's a switch on the ramp green. Maybe I can find that too while we're while we're at it. Where is the ramp green? Let me see if I can find it here. There's a lot of stuff on this. Oh, it's right there next to it. So the ramp green relay, the way it pulls in is through the rollover. So that's only on as long as that switch is on. How y'all doing today? Good. Doing good. So it can't be that switch because if it was that switch then this would just always be on. And you saw it's not on until you hit the switch at the beginning of the game. So uh, yeah, I think we've ruled out that switch. So it's pretty much got to be this switch. Nah, well, hmm. Let me rethink that. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably still this switch. What's probably going on is this opens up, but probably just for a little while. And this one maybe is adjusted too tight where it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. If it's killing, if this one's killing this one and this one, it should kill that one too, because they're all coming from the same spot. Oh, well, we're somewhere on this green thumper bumper light relay, so we're going to check that out. Okay, so I have found our problem. Whoop. That is the red one, green one, blue one. That's the green thumper bumper light relay. So there's the blue one. There's the red one. And there's the green one. The game is turned off and the relay is still shut. See how the switches are pulled in? These are open. So for whatever reason, that relay is not letting loose. So it's as simple as that. It just, it's stuck shut. <laughs> 
So sometimes it'll do that because it's magnetized. Sometimes it's just a physical thing. Let's see if I mess with it if it pops loose. Yep. So what was that? Hmm. I hate stuff like that because you're not really sure why. If you hold it for a while, does it do it? Sometimes it's a magnetism thing where it's magnetized. But it seems like this one may have just been kind of a fluke. You can see we've got it adjusted, right? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> if it's a magnetism thing, I'd like to get it to do it again so I could... If it's a magnetism thing, you can take it apart and clean the plate. And sometimes you can beat on it with a hammer, the plate, and it'll demagnetize it. But you saw it, and now you see it's not sticking. So you know what you do in an instance like that? You just play it a little bit and see if it comes back. But that's what we're looking at. So uh, if it pops up again, we'll know where to look. On to the next thing. Okay, so our pop bumper lights we crossed out. And then the green pop bumper light staying on we crossed out. And now I wrote green thumper bumper light relay sticks. So we'll keep our eye on that. So now we're going to look at the one up light blinks and the ball in play light. We got nothing. Nothing. Lights are always the easiest ones to figure out. That's why I'm waiting on these other ones. And sometimes whenever you figure out one, it'll help you figure out another one. So do the light ones first, because you, you might find other issues that fix some of your other stuff that's acting up. We don't have much here, but you get my point. All right, so the one-up light blinks and then goes off. And it could just be that the bulb's loose or something. But it always comes on and always goes off. Every time. So if it was loose, a lot of the times it wouldn't be on. So we'll check that out. So the one-up light blinks and the ball and play lights do not work. Okay, so the player up unit disc is in the back box, and there's the player up light. So that first light is the one I'm talking about. I haven't even started a second, third, or fourth player game yet, but that light comes on for just a second, and then goes back off. But looky, looky. The ball and play lights, none of them are working, and they all get their power from the game over relay. Oh, really? So that, wire, that one wire coming off the game over relay, that is gray and red, is probably a problem. Probably. The probability that that's probably a problem is probable. So the game over relay, I wonder if that's the last thing that uh, pops into place. And that's why I see it flicker for a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to check all the light bulbs to make sure they're in tight. And then we're going to check this wire and see if there's a... Now it could be too, that uh, like the ball count unit disc is in the bottom of the cabinet. The game over relay is in the bottom of the cabinet. So it could be that it's a bad connection on the Jones plug, where it plugs into the head, you know. But that wire is almost definitely an issue. You like how I set you up earlier? I was telling you... Sometimes when you fix one, it fixes another one. I'd already looked at the schematics. <laughs> so this is the game over relay that we're talking about. And if you look, there is the gray with a red stripe wire. It's on that first switch there. So when it goes back the other way, it should light all that stuff up. I don't know if I can just trip that by hand and get it to work, but why not try it? Yeah, I don't think you can do that. Let's go back where we were. Let's use the start button. Okay. Okay. So that switch looks like it's connected to me. But our one player light is not on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch it a little bit more and see if that changes anything. I see you! 
Here, I can prove that's me, and it's not just automatically doing it. Dun, dun, da da dun, 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 dun. All right. Enough of that foolishness. So what happens if I go up to the next ball? Can I do that? Can I do that? Would that work? Ball two. That's ball three. And the gentleman has it set on five ball. Ball four. Oh, it stayed that time. Ball five. Very cool. Okay, so the problem is that switch is just adjusted. It's touching, but it's, you know, it probably needs to be more like that, and it's more like that. It needs to be like that. So I'm going to literally just bend the switch a little bit closer, but you don't want to bend it too close where it doesn't open up when it goes the other way, you know. So after you go through these, you always find a couple little things that you missed or you didn't get right or whatever. So it's important to know how to look through the schematics and figure out. But you see how we were able to get right to the one damn switch that it must be just by looking at the schematics. I'm going to show you something real special here. So this is the back glass in it. So this is from 1971. This is a Bally 1971 4 million BC back glass in perfect shape. This thing is 50 years old and is flawless. So you may never see another one. <laughs> I imagine some of the games probably held up a little better, but the main thing that seems to be, at least to me, what, what keeps them in nice shape is if they're in an air-conditioned not necessarily cold, but warm too, you know, like a, a conditioned air environment. So if they get too cold or too hot, and even worse, if they get really hot and then really cold, you get all kinds of problems. But if you if they've been inside of like a basement or your game room or whatever for a long time, usually they're in pretty nice shape. Uh, people blame it on the lights and stuff. I don't think the lights have a damn thing to do with it. I think it's the, the heat and the cold. I think if it's been out in your uh, storage building, it's probably falling apart right now. If it's been in your garage that or that stays uh, relatively between 30 and 90, it's probably in nice shape. It's if you've got it out in the storage building and it gets down to 10 degrees one night, uh, or in the summer it gets up to 115 inside that sucker probably got problems but you know this is this is this is proof that you can have one that can hold up this thing's been overseas and everything else and it's in perfect shape and it's 50 years old so they didn't all fall apart it just depends on how they what kind of condition they were kept in and they kept this one in perfect condition literally mint condition So we only have three things left. We're still watching the green light. We've got the volcano scoring, and then we've got the bell. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt the bell on. Uh, basically, the 10-point bell was missing. The volcano scoring, I think, may be a whole bunch of mess. We'll see how bad that gets. That's definitely going to be the worst of it all, I think. But it might be working right. Look what I got. From the good folks at the Pinball Resource, Steve and Jimmy. Jimmy answers your emails, Steve answers the phone. So they are dedicated to making reproduction parts for Gottlieb pinball machines and having stuff in stock. And So this was actually for a Gottlieb, but it's also the same as the one on Obali. So we're going to hang this underneath the, uh, the 0 to 90 unit and see what happens. There's a little clapper in there that hits the side of it. Now this particular one doesn't have a finish or anything because it doesn't need one. This is just kind of how they were, you know. But I think there's some that are plated and there's some that are uh, gold or black. I think there's, I think they make black ones, ones like these, and then I think there's some shiny ones too. Why you would ever need a real sh nice shiny one, I don't know. Like to me, this looks nice. Look at that. 
but it's the same exact size and look as the original that's missing out of the game. Now this thing set us back a whole seven dollars. So, you know, if you're a little short on money, you might not be able to afford it. But for seven bucks, I'm buying it. But they sell all kinds of cool stuff. The pinball resource, pbresource.com. They're really cool because they stock all this crap like, you know, who the hell else is going to have something like this? We're missing the bell on the back of a freaking pinball machine and some dude actually makes new ones. That's crazy. So there it is. So I'm going to try to attach it in there and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. So we showed on the previous video, every time you score 10 points, this reel turns, and there should have been a bell hanging under it, because this little clapper was here, that every time it moves, this clapper moves, right? And so this particular one has this bell, which is a 5 inch, and now it has the 3 inch. The other thing just slaps it. Boy, that's cool. And I just figured out too, you don't really need a grommet. I've been putting like a rubber grommet on it. You don't really need it. You can just screw it right to it. So I put a screw and a, a uh, nut on it. And there it is. So uh, we got the bell in. Um, that leaves us with the volcano scoring. Gong, gong, gong. All right, folks, so this video is getting long in the tooth. I guess we're going to have to wait on the volcano till the next video, but we've about got it. What do you think? Doesn't it sound beautiful? It's like Christmas. It still did it. So now we got the volcano relay and that to work on next time. <laughs> but at least we know why it's doing it. It's magnetized or something. All right, folks. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. Man, that, that bell sounds great. Now remember, the back door's off and the glass is off. So it'll sound a lot different once the, uh, the glass is on it. Well, I can play this one a lot better with one hand than I normally can. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far. And uh, look for our next video where we'll get right back in it. What a good sounding game. Boy, she's snappy. So we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, we have a link down below to Amazon. If you're going to, ooh, almost got it. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, if you click our link before you go there, it gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And also, make sure to check out our parts page. Go to lionsarcade.com. And up at the top, you'll, you'll see all of our games for sale. And up at the top, you'll also see all of our parts for sale, which links the parts that we use in our videos and things like that, but also some of our stuff like t-shirts and coffee mugs and all that stuff. So go check that out if you get time. And finally, have you seen my brother Donnie? Boy, that annoys me. I got to fix that. We'll get it next time, people. At least we know now what it is. Have you seen my brother Donnie? My brother Donnie is our brother channel. He's literally my brother Donnie. <laughs> And uh, he and I are over there a lot, working on stuff. Well, lately, we've been working on some old buildings and uh, fixing them up to get them ready to rent in this small little town near here uh, to try to help out there, revitalize their downtown area. So go check that out. If you like watching me work on old pinball machines, you might like watching us work on old buildings, too. So uh, we'll see you on the next video. I thought we were going to do just a volcano, but remember, I wrote that down, so I knew... I knew that that thing was going to pop its ugly head back up because we never fixed it. I just figured out what it was doing. Uh, but I'm going to guess it's magnetized or something, even though I couldn't get it to do it again after we popped it loose. There's something going on there. But we'll get to the bottom of it. Don't you fret. So leave your comments below. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.